welcome to Mock the Week. Thank you very much. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Nathan Caton and Miles Jupp, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. We start tonight with our round called Headliners. Here's a picture of some powerful people getting together this week. But what does L-A-G-S stand for? Is it Leaders Admire Glossy Surface? <laughs> <laughs> Is it uh, how David Icke sees the G8? Lizards, aliens, Germans, sociopaths. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A, a brief concession to reality from David there with the Germans. <laughs> Is it? Lonely angler goes speed dating. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Uh, he's just, it's probably just Cameron describing what's going to happen, isn't it? He's probably going, later, after globalisation, strippers. <laughs> <laughs> Is it leaders assembled for Gangnam Style? <laughs> I think it might be uh, what you can do in Ella Skinner at night, which is uh, look at Google or sleep. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it, is it, is it, in fact, look at guilty supplier? And you've got to look at whoever ran the table you think has been supplying arms to Syria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Putin's not making a lot of eye contact in that game, is he? He's just staring at the table. Uh, <laughs> In fact, uh, Nick's Clegg's role in the whole thing. Liberals are getting snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, describing the Jake conference, lame attempt to give a shit? <laughs> Cameron's just probably describing what's going to happen. <laughs> Smash the system! <laughs> Smash the system! <laughs> yeah. After, well done. after we've been paid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Citizen Edison. <laughs> Is it just leaders all gather somewhere? <laughs> I, I so wish it did. Is it, it, is it leaders attend global summit? It is, of course. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Yes, the answer I was looking for was leaders attend global summit. This is news that David Cameron has played host to world leaders at the G8 summit in Enniskill in Northern Ireland. The two-day event saw the leaders discuss Cameron's proposals for a crackdown on tax havens, EU and USA trade arrangements and the conflict in Syria. Well, as Cameron and indeed the people at Enniskill were the good hosts. The hotel they're holding this summit in is bankrupt. Yeah. They're, they're yes. holding a summit to fix the global financial crisis in a hotel bankrupted by the global financial crisis. It's like holding a session for a drug user in Charlie Sheen's bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> this is a photograph of the leaders outside near Loch Aaron, looking for some reason like a Sabutio team, uh, where they've yeah. been nailed to that plank. So it's like something you send away for in the Sunday Express magazine. You pay £19.99 a month. This ceramic model years. of the world leaders can be yours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In ten different parts. It's like a fairground shooting game for Al Qaeda. <laughs> 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 yeah. well, they, they, they were holding it in Northern Ireland, weren't they? And I suppose one of the advantages of holding it in Northern Ireland is if they do have any anti G8 protesters, people in Northern Ireland are just going to laugh at them, aren't they? You know, call that a protest. We'll show you a protest. <laughs> I think it's good for the protesters themselves, because I would imagine Northern Ireland is one of the best places to find a cheap second-hand balaclava. <laughs> <laughs> I did a tour last year and I was talking about the riots in London, and, I, and, I, and there was a point where I would go, did you see the riots in the audience? You know, and uh, Northern Ireland, Derry, in Derry, they went, riots? My whole... <laughs> 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 yeah. like a genuine civic pride in how much better their riots <laughs> were than the riots. One bloke shouted, that was a shopping trip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the reason, the reason I brought it up always is because there's one thing when it comes to riots, and this, was, this may have been like, in, in their mind, there's one thing that they have in Northern Ireland that the U, rest of the UK don't have when it comes to riots. Do you know what it is? A loyalty card? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello, John. Hello. Yeah, back again. Looting yeah, you again. Yeah. A genuine grievance? <laughs> <laughs> No, a piece, of, a piece of equipment. It's actually the UK's, but they're all stored in Northern Ireland. It's water cannons. It's water cannons. But yeah. they could make those friendlier by popping a Barocca in. <laughs> Hang on, you, if you put a Barocca into a water cannon... You uh, just get friendly foam, it'd be like a disco, everyone would love it. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be orange, it might be a bit antagonistic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All of the UK's water cannons are stored in, in Northern Ireland. The funny they, one, you, I, 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 if you ask that in Northern Ireland, everyone in Northern Ireland knows that. If you ask, hey, why, why were there no water cannons in the London riots? Everyone in Northern Ireland knows what. But if you ask in, say, Northampton, why were there no water cannons in the London riots? The genuine first answer was, host pipe ban. <laughs> <laughs> as if they didn't use it in case middle-class people pretended to riot to get their... Oh, come on, I'm rioting! Yeah. I'm rioting near the Begonias! <laughs> uh, I'm rioting here! <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, what's been banned for the first time in the GH? Wives. They're not, no partners are in No there. partners. No partners. Golfing resort, Ireland. It sounds more like a stag do than a summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michelle Obama stayed in uh, Dublin, I think, didn't she? And they, they went to river dance. Is that still on in Dublin? No, actually, I don't. we must have put it on specially. <laughs> Literally, I think they went, what are we going to do? Uh, <laughs> oh, don't we have some dancers still lying around? Uh, you know, in parks with their legs still moving, just looking for... Uh, <laughs> we'll dance for cash written on a time. <laughs> really? The Obamas think that the reason that in river dance they only use the lower half of the body to dance with is because in Ireland all the arms have been decommissioned. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I like that. That's really good. That was. I think that our work is done. <laughs> a lot, a long have... journey. Uh, <laughs> they got there at the end. Yeah. Yeah. They, usually oh, oh. Special, um, they usually have a special programme of like sort of visits and lectures uh, for all the wives, and uh, you have to feel sorry for Angela Merkel's husband, just generally. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Joe Merkel. <laughs> <laughs> Merkel. Sorry. Did, it, did um, Barack Obama talk to some of the kids before the G8 started? I, I thought that was good, because uh, out of all the leaders, he's probably the best one. Um, one, because he's obviously a great speaker, and also because most of the young white kids nowadays are talking like they're black. So, <laughs> probably the only one who can relate. <laughs> By the way, what else does Barack Obama get that Putin wanted? Michelle Obama. <laughs> yeah. Quite possibly, but we've got, got, he, he got, got, got the gym. Yeah. He got the gym, yeah. He got the gym. There was a fight over who would get to go in the gym. Because they, they wouldn't work out at the same time. Fair enough. It's very difficult to negotiate with somebody who's, who you've seen vigorously toweling their balls. <laughs> 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 so, what about yeah. trade? Uh, can we talk about this later? No, now's as good as time as any. But the... he lost, didn't he? Obama got it because Putin gave in because he said he was going to get his exercise by swimming in the lock. Yes, as a lake lock yeah, out very early in the morning. Yeah. It's, it's odd that Putin wanted to swim in an icy lake because that's normally what happens to his critics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, P Putin, you know, because he, he loves the hard man image, doesn't he? Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is just a photo opportunity for him. You know exactly that when he comes out of that northern Irish lake, he'll have a bear going, I just <laughs> found this. Yeah. <laughs> just a KGB guy yeah. in a suit going, can I get out yet? Shit! <laughs> <laughs> What, ta what? Uh, what tax reforms have they agreed? They, they have agreed, basically, that they should do more with tax havens and yes. they should be more uh, transparent. There's always ways around it, though, isn't there? I mean, Jimmy Carr's registers as a, as a channel island. <laughs> <laughs> I, think he's, uh, I think he's literally registered as a Jimmy Carr. He just pays road tax. <laughs> 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 I spoke to uh, uh, the other day about how what they wanted to clamp down on. And I just, if for some reason I, it sang to me that he wanted to crack, clamp down on secretive companies in secretive locations. And there's something about <laughs> it's, it's a perfume. It is, yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> secretive companies in, in secretive locations. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there aren't it. Uh, <laughs> With avoid and evade nonsense, isn't it? Yeah. You can avoid tax, but you can't evade tax. Yeah, that's right, because av avoidance is legal, um, whereas um, evasion is illegal. And if you are sent to jail for evasion, you will find out what it's like to have a loophole abused. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any other news? Why might this be affecting children? The story is that uh, there's concern that Le Lego minifigures are becoming <laughs> angrier. They're, or they're looking angrier, right? Of course, they're, of course they're angry. Of course Lego figures are angry. They're all alcoholics. <laughs> it's all this for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a... The report was that over the years, Lego uh, toys have become, have become more realistic and included more unhappy faces. 
It's been studied by EA, the Department of Too Much Time in Their Hands in the <laughs> University of <laughs> the University of Why Don't Other Scientists yeah. Take Me Seriously? Uh, <laughs> yeah. That apparently Lego figures have become more, you know, they've expressed more. And a, a lot of it is due to the fact that, like, now Lego have a lot of kind of links in characters, like the Hulk. It, it doesn't work if you have a Hulk Lego figure going, Hi, I'm the Hulk. Uh, with a, with a benign yeah. face. Don't make me placid, you wouldn't like me when I'm placid. <laughs> 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 yeah. There could be many more Lego faces that would be more appropriate because you could have lots of, lots of happy ones, you could have miserable ones, you could have some Lego men that look quite paranoid as if perhaps they wondered as if they were being controlled by giants. <laughs> I mean, yesterday I was, I, I was a fireman, and today <laughs> I, seem, I seem to be on a boat. Uh, what? <laughs> really, honestly, uh, you know, there's, there's no job consistency here, like, whatever. You train for one thing, you'll well, end up doing anything in Legoland. It's the modern life, isn't it? You, it can't, is. you don't have a trade for life anymore. <laughs> yes. We're all Lego old... men now, Dara. We're all Lego men now. No. Listen, we are all Lego men. This is what we would look like. Uh, <laughs> 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 Okay, three of us <laughs> look ridiculous, and Andy looks like Lego Colombian drug dealer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Hugh looks look like... like George Michael. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> exactly. That yeah. image is exactly what I think of when I'm trying to delay orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I could agree. <laughs> <laughs> Give that round. Chris, you and Gary are the winners! Yeah. Play a round called It Must Be Something I G8. This game <laughs> involves Nathan, Gary, and Miles. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand up challenge. I launch a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. Okay, here we go. Let us spin the wheel. The first subject is Showbiz. Who wants to come in on that? Miles Job. Well, what, what can I tell you about show business? Um, almost, almost nothing. Um, <laughs> no, it's, in fact, it's very, it's very nice to see uh, an audience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest, that's not always been the case. Um, I'm, I remember doing a gig about 12 years ago in uh, Edinburgh. I was doing a gig one night and there was, um, there was one person <laughs> in the audience. The entire audience was made up of, of one person, right? And in those days, I was in a double X. Right. <laughs> now, <laughs> if, you're, if you're in an opera or something and you and the orchestra outnumber the audience, there is, there is possibly some dignity involved. If you're, if you're in a double act and you outnumber the audience, that is, that is pretty much the bleakest thing that can happen. <laughs> right? but, but we went for it because we were young and keen. Uh, Jupp and George, we were called. He's a, he's a policeman now, no longer allowed to be amusing. Um, <laughs> we were going for it. It was actually going all right, but after about five minutes, the, um, the audience... He, he put his hand up um, <laughs> and we said, you know, what is it, Joe? Um, <laughs> he said, I'm really sorry to do this to you, but I have to go to the lavatory. <laughs> we had to wait for him to come back. <laughs> All right, let's spin the wheel again. Next up is nightclubs. Who wants to come in on that? Nate. Yes, so, um, nightclubs. Um, I've, I've got to a stage in my life now where I'm not kind of a fan of nightclubs anymore. Like, little, little things about nightclubs annoy me, like, um, like nightclub bouncers, for example. You know, you get those, those big, massive guys who take their job a bit too seriously, you know. They stand out in front and go, no, no, you can't come in, I can't, you can't come in, yeah. I said so, yeah. I'm here because I'm the boss, all right? I'm here because I'm the boss. It's like, no, you're here because you haven't got any qualifications, man. <laughs> like, don't get it twisted. Of course, I don't say that to his face, because I'm not dumb, you know. <laughs> I've got qualifications. <laughs> um, the biggest reason, though, why I don't like nightclubs is because I don't operate well in nightclubs. Like, you know, like, like approaching women, for example. Like, I've got something in me that in nightclubs doesn't work. Um, it's called manners. <laughs> <laughs> One time I was doing this gig, right, it was this out-of-town gig, I was staying over for the night, so I thought, you know what, I'll go to a nightclub, you know, check out the local nightlife. Uh, I'm in the club, I see this nice girl, very attractive, so I thought, okay, you know what, I'll, I'll approach her, right? So I walked up to her and went, hey, how you doing, you all right? You having a good night? And she went, mm-mm, idiot, no, you're trying to shut me up, yeah, get me rotted, bitch, what are you doing, man? I'm like, well, I'm gonna talk to you, man, get me rotted, rotted, bitch, like, idiot. <laughs> Like, what the hell? Listen, 
Look, calm down. Firstly, all I did was say hello, trying to make polite conversation. And secondly, you're a white girl in a nightclub in Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Nathan. So that leaves us with Gary. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And <laughs> relationships. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> that does actually look like me and my girlfriend. So that's <laughs> uh, apparently, in Norfolk, the marriage guidance service is called Related. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend says I'm not very romantic. The other day we were kissing on the sofa. She said, how about we take this into the bedroom? I said, OK, you get the other end. When, uh, when she suggested we try playing doctors and nurses, I was really hoping for something sexier than being left in a corridor for two days. <laughs> My girlfriend and I are trying for a baby. Her mom's agreed to help out, just so I get hard. <laughs> She's going to see that on telly as well. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> They always say you'll find the love of your life when you're not really looking, which was true, but by then I'd run her over. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to persuade my girlfriend to sexually stimulate me with her key ring, but she just keeps fobbing me off. So... <laughs> when I heard you could now be a sperm donor by post, I came in a jiffy. <laughs> I went to a swingers club. The doorman goes, it's £15 to get in, or you can pay £20. That includes a meal. I paid £20. I went in. This oiled naked guy comes up to me, goes, hello, my name's Emil. <laughs> <laughs> I once had a one-night stand and I didn't get an erection. That isn't cool. Luckily, the woman I was with was really understanding. She just said, don't worry, that used to happen to me. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. And that round of points for the game to Lady. Come on, back. <laughs> now we play a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Nathan, which category would you like? Um, health, please. OK, your category is health, and the answer is eight. What is the question? Is it when talking to Barack Obama, how many black friends does David Cameron claim to have? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what might bras look like if breasts were arranged vertically? <laughs> 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 it, according to figures given to the tax office, how many coffees has Starbucks ever sold? <laughs> yeah. Is it um, after what hour are you legally permitted to consume square mint chocolates? <laughs> 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 Is it how many times has Julian and the Songs watched the complete DVD collection at the Ecuadorian Embassy? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, in fact, how many Father's Day cards did Boris Johnson get? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many episodes of Top of the Pots from the 1970s are safe to repeat? <laughs> Is it how many thousand people are looking at this thinking, why is Lamar doing comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Including Lamar. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Is it, in fact, how many days should this year's winner of The Voice reserve for their career? <laughs> <laughs> the, it's about the NHS. Is it, in fact, speaking, how many commandments are there now for patient care? Yes, you're absolutely right. Thank you very much, Andy Parsons. That is it. Yes, the question I was looking for was how many care commandments are being proposed for hospitals to help improve standards for patients? This is the news that the Care Quality Commission proposes that doctors and nurses should be issued with eight fundamentals of care to ensure that patients are treated well. The charter to be displayed in every ward in GP surgery across the country is one of a number of proposals to improve standards of health care. Now, obviously, traditionally there are ten commandments, but they felt it unnecessary to include the one about the donkey. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> Is the one about the donkey? There's a donkey. It's an oxen, isn't it? Welcome to Mock the Week 458 BC. <laughs> <laughs> Thou shalt not cover thy neighbour's drip. <laughs> <laughs> Thou shalt have a right to wear a gown that doesn't show your bum. <laughs> Food that can be cut with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they're so desperate for money. My nan was in hospital recently and they had to kick her off her trolley because they were taking it back to Asda for the pound. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard your nan's off her trolley anyway. <laughs> I can't offend any more family today. <laughs> in other news, what has been compared this week to a bad pub quiz? Is it this... not the week? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That is the it's least of the things that's been said about it's this. The UK, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's the UK citizenship it test. It is the citizenship test, yes. This isn't uh, part of the problem. The questions are too trivial, they said, right? But I think they should just ask them, like, you know, like real British questions, like, for example, um, what scares you more, terrorism or snow? Snow? <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the country. <laughs> <laughs> really Our next question I'll give you, was... I'll give you, I'll give you some uh, samples of the okay. question, right? Just so you get the idea of what stuff is being asked. And the problem is, you, you, you cherry pick any of these, you can make it all seem ridiculous. But the uh, but their quiz is stuff like this. Um, which of the following statements is correct? The mousetrap is a play that's been running in London's West End since 1952, or it's an environmental policy aimed to prevent mice from destroying crops. <laughs> I like the way that you. It's like an ad for the mousetrap, which needs, you know. I uh, <laughs> other questions: uh, Which sport can be traced back to 15th century Scotland? Surfing, Formula One, golf, <laughs> or motorbike racing? <laughs> These are the actual questions. Yeah, of, these are actual questions of the test. But this isn't like a bad pub quiz. This is like one of those quizzes at the end of the before the break on ITV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is very very difficult, though, isn't it? Because you've got to decide what to do with immigration. Everybody's got their different views on it. And the, the thing is that you have to make sure that people are going to fit in. And I had this I had this fantastic conversation with this bloke this week, who went, "What I should do, what I should do is I should just ask one question, right? I should say, should there be immigration?" And if they say no, you should let them in. Well, they seem to be if midway through the test, it would stop and go, OK, you've got Welsh citizenship. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to stop? <laughs> it's difficult, though, isn't it? For English citizenship, you should simply go, Do you know, can you make this sound? I think all they need is, rather than a test, they should give them more that crib sheet they give to Indian call centre workers. You know, hello, this is Tony. No, it's not Tony. Yeah. It is. <laughs> What's the weather there like, Tony? Yeah. Rainy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've been found out. We've been found out. Shut it down. Shut it down. Move to Lahore. Move to Lahore. Open up again. <laughs> so, yeah. Which publication did Charles and Camilla feature in recently? Readers' Wives. <laughs> Very much not. No. <laughs> They're Who's in the Bino, uh, oh, which, uh, so that's two outmoded institutions for the price of one. <laughs> that's right, they've got a new strip called Lord Snooty and his homeopath. <laughs> <laughs> Can yes, you know, that's in the Bino, yes, celebrating the 75th anniversary. Hang on, oh. hang on, hang on, what was that? Put that back up again. What the hell was that? You just popped up. No, not that one. Don't the one, the one you hid from us. Show us that yes. one again. We Show us that it. one again. <laughs> We've seen it. You've yeah, dashed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell was that? When were you planning to run that one in? Some oh. of us come out of that really badly. I... Andy appears to be a baby. Andy's oh. tiny. Andy's a baby. Oh, I appear to be Minnie the Minx or something like that. <laughs> I am huge. I'm like a giant... Like, you look like you look Sigourney like white... Weaver uh, or something. <laughs> Which one of us is holding the love beads? <laughs> <laughs> Cos they ain't going anywhere near me! <laughs> you look a bit like Wayne Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all the losers there. Great, that's, that's been done by the person who actually draws Dennis the Menace. Yes. Why are we losers? That's, surely that's a life win. Why would you look at me? I'm like a tree. <laughs> oh, right. I'm a tree with a... I'm a potato with a smaller potato hovering on top of that. Well, listen, potato. they've given me a chin that makes me look like a stealth bomber. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the point's going to Andy, Nathan and Miles! <laughs> now we come to <laughs> scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here right. we go. The first subject is unlikely things to hear on radio. You're listening to Radio U-Tree, the cream of the 1970s broadcasting live from Pentonville. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jazz FM. You're listening by mistake. 
This is the breakfast news. The Prime Minister had porridge, the Home Secretary had muesli. <laughs> <laughs> My piles are giving me so much bloody grit. No. You're listening to Smooth FM. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Somali shipping forecast. Don't go out there! <laughs> this is Magic FM. Pick a frequency, any frequency. <laughs> <laughs> F9, hit. A2, miss. C3, hit. <laughs> that was the battleshipping forecast. <laughs> You're listening to Radio 3. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> On Talk Radio today, we've been discussing what a tosser Nick Clegg is. And now on the line, we've got David from central London. <laughs> <laughs> that was God is Dead by Black Sabbath. You're listening to Vatican Radio. <laughs> and at number one this week, Jedward, proving that teenage girls cannot be trusted with money. Well, I'm in the eye in the sky with the uh, travel report. I've waited 20 years to file this particular report. If I look down, I can see red lorry, yellow lorry, <laughs> red lorry, yellow... <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch that dial! I'm defrosting a pie. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on Radio 1, Nick Grimshaw. He's not very good, but he's only 28, so he definitely didn't get up to anything in the 1970s. <laughs> Next, Ed Miliband lays out his policies in I'm sorry I haven't a clue. <laughs> <laughs> it's now 10pm on Radio 4. And before the news, here's five minutes of free porn. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear on a science documentary. My favourite element is helium. I can't speak highly enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> the solar system is so vast that it could comfortably accommodate your mum. <laughs> <laughs> the most fascinating thing is, if you really spend enough time looking at the alignment of the stars, your wife will leave you. <laughs> They call it dark matter. Well, whatever it is, I've tried to flush it four times and it's not <laughs> bloody there. The light from this new distant planet takes so long to get here that we're actually seeing things that happened years ago. And that's why scientists have named it Dave. <laughs> Tonight, we're discussing sports science. Is it a real job or is it just P.E. when it's raining? <laughs> <laughs> in our next experiment, we're going to prove that putting Dara O'Brien in a room full of young people still doesn't make science interesting. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got the points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we look through the telescope, we can see the biggest black hole ever found. Oh, no, I've left the lens cap on. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't d -ream shit? <laughs> Does your granny stair lift work? Well, it's all to do with nanotechnology. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nigel, that's not how you make a test tube, baby. Get your penis out of the test tube. <laughs> so, this is amazing. Right, so what you're saying is that somewhere, Professor Cox, in a parallel universe, there is a me with a hair. That's right, Dara. 
the end of that round. <laughs> Nobody gets any points at the end of that round. <laughs> Everyone come back. Chris, you and Gary get the points. And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis, and Gary Delaney. Yes, Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Nathan Caton, and Miles Jock. Thank you for watching. I'm Gary Breen. Good night. And Gary Delaney returns to mock the week as a guest next week alongside Holly Walsh and Josh Widdicombe. That's next Thursday at 10. Yeah.